Welcome in the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for finding us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean. We're on Spotify. We are on Google Podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel. Download that for free. We're there every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also, check out Five Reasons YouTube. We'll be introducing Five Our Sports Talk soon. Alex Donald will be hosting the 12 to 1 show. Looks like I might host the 4 to 5 show. We'll see how that thing goes. We're also working on a morning show. That'll be in late July. Also, check out Five Reasonsports.com. Spell that one out F I V E Reasonsports.com. The latest from Brady and Greg about the Duncan Robinson news, which is that he was seriously considered for the Olympic team for the spot that ultimately went to Kevin Love. We may get into that a little bit here on the episode. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. So many of them are local including our friends over at Seltzer Mayberg. They've been with us since the beginning. If you've been hurt in a car accident or a slip and fall, you got to call the law offices of Seltzer Mayberg at 855-5000-LAW. That's 855-5000-LAW or go to onecalllegal.com. That's O-N-E, calllegal.com. If you mention five reasons, you'll get a free consultation. Again, they handle personal injury, but they also handle immigration, divorce, and just about everything else there. They've got 24-7 availability. They'll make sure you work directly with the attorney that will get you the compensation that you deserve. So again, it's 855-5000-LAW, the attorneys of Seltzer Mayberg, one O-N-E, calllegal.com. And now, tonight's episode. One, two, three, four, five. On the floor. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick with Alex Toledo and Greg Sylvander. Part of the Five Reason Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on five on the floor. Here's tonight's floor plan. I've got Greg Sylvander. I've got Alex Salito. You can follow the latter at Tropical Blanket. We're going to get into the Dame Lillard conversation. Now, Brady replaced Alex yesterday with Greg, and we talked about kind of the diamonds in the rough, the uncut gems, guys like Collins and Jaron Jackson Jr., Lonzo Ball, uh, we got into all of that on the podcast, kind of, are there guys that you could go after, Colin Sexton, um, that maybe would be worth more money to you than they are to their current team? We did that episode, however, before the Dame Lillard news broke. And the Dame Lillard news, which we told you about about a month ago, a couple things. One, we told you that the door was cracked open for Dame to leave. That's what we've been hearing along with our guy, Adam Barai. Uh, we've all sort of reported that. Um, and then we also reported that the reporter who would break that news would be Chris Haynes, because Chris, who works for Yahoo, somebody I worked uh, alongside a few years ago up in Cleveland, it's a very strong relationship with Dame Lillard. That's Dame's guy. And so there was a report that came out through Chris Haynes where Dame essentially said the door is cracked open. Uh, and part of it uh, is because of not knowing kind of where the franchise is going, but also some of this coaching search stuff, which is confusing because Chauncey Billups is one of the guys he supposedly wanted, but there's been a lot of backlash about the Chauncey Billups hire, A, because it's not Becky Hammond, who is somebody that we believe uh, that one of the owners in the Portland front office wanted, but also because Chauncey uh, has an allegation in his past, uh, a sexual assault allegation. And so uh, that didn't go over particularly well. And Dame, who is probably the most active NBA star on social media in terms of interacting with fans, got a lot of that backlash. And so that's being used in a certain degree as an excuse uh, for him sort of feeling it from the fans who he had said were the reason that he was going to stay in Portland. So it's a little bit confusing Here's how we're going to address it from our perspective, though. Um, we know that one of the places Dame Lillard would consider is Miami. We reported that also a month ago. Uh, we also know that some of the other teams that could get in the mix here are teams like Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. Um, but there are others. I mean, there was a report about New Orleans today. Dame Lillard is a top three guard in the top three or four guard in the NBA. Everybody's going to be interested. Uh, but where we're going to go here with Alex and Greg is this. Is there a path? Because there's no question Dame would want to play in Miami. There's no question that the Heat would want Dame Lillard. But is Portland is a part of this process too. Is there a path to Damian Lillard without giving up Bam Adebayo? I'll start here with you, Greg. 
there are obstacles, but there are no obstacles, but there are obstacles. Um, so yeah, Dame sure. Lillard is, let's just start with the math first. Um, 39 million is what he's due in 21, 22. Uh, and so if you just think about it to, to make sure that you are able to match salaries, Goran, uh, his team option, Iguodala's team option, and Tyler Hero, if we're just going to like build a, a package, that gets you there money-wise. The issue that the Heat run into is the draft capital because it's already been kind of floated out there that Portland wants four first-round picks at least. Uh, you know, Some of these teams that are coming uh, out of the woodworks are teams that have a lot of draft capital, and that is what is, I think, getting them in the conversation, maybe in New Orleans and Oklahoma City, stuff like that. So from Miami's perspective, the way that they're going to get this done without including – uh, you know, the core guys that Riley established in the, in the presser is to figure out a way to remove protections on this pick that OKC has. If they did that, um, it'll free up, you know, the ability to use the 25 and the 27 picks. Uh, and if they could somehow re even reacquire that pick from OKC, it would open up, you know, 23, 25, 27. You can do pick swaps. You can do a lot of stuff. So that's the only way that I can think of a coherent package that doesn't include the two guys, Jimmy and Bam. All right. So, Alex, is there anything in your view that is off limits other than Jimmy and Bam? for Dame Lillard. In other words, is there any, uh, as many draft picks as you could possibly acquire by unlocking the picks or at least have the access to use plus any player on the roster? Is there, is there literally anything that would stop you from trying to acquire Dame Lillard to pair with Bam and Jimmy? Short answer. No way. I mean, there's nothing I'm, I'm over here trying to go and follow along with all the logistics of everything that has to happen in order to keep Bam and or Jimmy uh, you know, to pair along with Dame. I think that's the dream. And it's very much to me, very similar to the Harden situation from before where the, where the Heat weren't able to get to those pick swaps and those picks because of certain things going on with OKC and, and, and their lack of, you know, being ready for this point, right? Like you, there, there's definitely some criticism here that needs to be put on the Heat for because they're a team that, you know, kind of prides themselves on trading for big time guys and they're not really ready for it. Now, uh, like what Leif has said is, uh, you know, just completely true as far as there, there's not really obstacles, right? The famous Pat Riley quote, because like you said, there's a bunch of things they can do to get to those picks, but are they going to have the most attractive package? Most likely not, especially when you're, if you're putting in a bidding war among those four, those uh, three other teams that you named there, it just seems that Miami's not going to win that. He has to say that he wants to be here. And we've heard, we've heard this all before, but I don't know, man. I don't know. The relationships with Jimmy and Dame and all of that, like Bam about to be playing in Team USA with Damian Lillard. I wonder if, they, you know, th there's some influence to be had here <laughs> behind the scenes. And I just think I wonder if that's what it comes down to. But then also I'm weighing the other side and it's like he's on a four-year deal. So I wonder how Portland's thinking about this. Are they really just going to go for the best package? I don't know. It feels like the odds are completely against the Heat, but they can make it happen. It's just – a whole lot of stuff they got to do. Is it fair to say, Greg, that the only way it happens is if Dame says Miami? Because because the Harden situation was like that too. People people have total revisionist history about Harden. Okay, we've talked about it. The, the Heat did not decline sending Robinson and Hero to for Harden. Okay, none of that happened. Uh, we reported that they were reluctant to give up Duncan as part of giving up everything every pick they could possibly come up with earlier in the season you know guys like precious and kz had more value than they had you know later in the season right because they were kind of unknown quantities with potential and then when you saw them on the floor you're like oh a couple years away um and so at the very least so uh, this was not this idea about not going for Harden. i will say this and some people will disagree with me I would go all in for Lillard before I would go all in for Harden. I, I just feel for one thing, as much as Dame has been eliminated from the playoffs, Dame is a better playoff player than James Harden has been over the course of his career. His numbers do not tank the one series against drew holiday. That was it. But otherwise his numbers do not tank. He's the best late game guard in the league. Uh, in terms of, uh, of of shot making, I know Chris Paul, others are great in terms of creation, but in terms of shot making, uh, he's totally fearless. He would take the burden off Jimmy. And also, um, 
he's not, let's just put it this way. He's not out of shape. Okay. Which was the other issue with Harden, which may have caught up with Harden later this year. So I, I'm more all in on Lillard than I am on Harden. And also I'm off of the idea of not trading depth because the heat's depth didn't prove to be what I thought it was. Okay. With that said, Greg is the only way this happens. And then on the other side, we will get into bam. If Dame says, you know, and I know first thing you're right. There are relationships. There's a relationship with Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy wants it. <laughs> I know that. Um, I'm not going to get into more specifics than that, but Jimmy wants it. Um, is there, any, does Dame have to say Miami? Is that the only way that this happens? And even if so, does Portland even care? That's the issue. Uh, I think that even if he says Miami, that it's, there's just no way that they can conjure up a package that's going to be equal. Um, you would have to rely on the organization in Portland, just in good faith, sending Dame where he really wants to be. And that being some sort of, heartfelt packaged um, situation, but you got guys fighting for their careers um, and, and on thin ice in that front office and this whole coaching process, hiring process has been a total mess. there. the laughing stock of the league. All of it has been a complete nightmare from a PR perspective, so much so that they're, they're, they're announcing the head coaching hire in the fourth quarter of a, of a playoff game, like just to, to get in the news cycle and get it out. And um so, so, so it's a mess there, and I don't think that they're going to be inclined to, to play nice with Dame that way. So I just think that ultimately another team will outbid Miami, and there's only one you know, real trump card that they have. I hate using that phrase these days, is, um, is Bam Adebayo, and I know we're going to talk about him next, but other than that, to me, like the first thing that, that popped in my head when, when I heard about some of the other teams that you mentioned, Ethan, is like, Maybe, maybe CJ McCollum could be had here. Maybe that's my, where Miami should look, and that's a different episode. But um, to me, I feel like they're going to get outbid. Well, we know that Riley's done this before. Uh, he went after Elton Brand when the real target ultimately was Lamar Odom with the Clippers a few years ago. It's not the first time that you go after the other guy um, after you can't get the first guy. We are going to talk about BAM next. I, I think we need to get to it before we do. I will tell you about another great sponsor of the five reasons sports network. Are you betting during the conference finals? You got to bet over at my bookie, go to mybookie.ag, mybookie.ag. use the code five F I V E. You can bet daily MLB. You can bet the NBA and NHL playoffs, Tampa and Montreal starting tonight as we speak. So make sure you check that out. NBA NHL promo code five F I V. They do have the best live betting platform. There's no question about that. I've used a few of them. Uh, this is the one that you want to jump in on. It's a very easy platform to use. It's easy to get your money compared to a lot of these go to mybookie.ag. mybookie.ag. use the code five to claim your bonus. You will get a bonus with that code experience sports in a whole new light and have a chance at some serious cash along the way, Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. All right, let's uh, let's get to it. You mentioned, um, you know, Philadelphia potentially in this. You know, Daryl Morey is going to make a pitch, right? They do have Ben Simmons. Whatever his value, however it's tanked, he still was a number one overall pick in the draft. And, and clearly, uh, you know, if a team thinks they can fix him, there's enough to work with there defensively and, uh, you know, and playmaking wise that maybe you do think that you can get more out of him than Philly did. Uh, you take a look at the Knicks. They don't really have a lot to trade player wise, but they got a ton of picks and they've got a lot of cap space and they could basically put a team together around Dame in a place where he would be maybe the biggest star in town in any, I mean, the Yankees have a few, but like Dame Lillard in New York, man, that is, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he loves the big stage, right? That's a perfect fit for him too. Uh, maybe New Orleans can figure out a way to pair him with Zion. They got Brandon Ingram, somebody we've talked about before that maybe could be a piece that could be sent the other direction. Boston maybe trades Jalen Brown. Okay. And they, Brad Stevens starts off with Dame Lillard in Boston in, in a historical place. And of course, you know that LeBron is going to make the call and, and likely, and we believe has already been making the calls to Dame to try to get him to play there with him and AD. Um, the only guy that the heat have, because they're not trading Jimmy, that sort of defeats the purpose here. The only guy they have that can put them in the conversation with some of these other players that can be moved is Bam Adebayo. So I'll start here with you, Alex. If that's what Portland says, you can have Dame, but we're going to get our big to build around here with Bam. Do you hang up the phone this time? Like sort of the heat would have if the Lakers had asked for Dwayne Wade back in 2004, or do you say, okay, let's, let's start a conversation. 
I think similar to way to times in the past, especially in the recent past, maybe they would be willing to, but it would be the last thing. Like if they would push it to, you know, the last second possible, you know, to the point where they actually have to add them. I think that has a lot to do with uh, Intel on whether or not other teams kind of threw in their, their best pieces and trade offers, whether it comes to, you know, New Orleans, I don't even know if that's a realistic option or not with Ingram or Boston with Jalen Brown or Philly with Simmons. I just think like, and, you know, I really feel like the other two teams that will kind of trump the heat with the package here it comes down to the Celtics and the Sixers, which really, really pains me to say, because I do not want to see Lillard in either of those teams. That's for damn sure. I just think when it comes to Bam, Damian Lillard is worth trading Bam for in a vacuum. I don't know if it's the right move. I've gone back and forth over it, just over and over. I do kind of believe that the that the move is – for, for a star trying to join the Miami Heat is to play alongside Jimmy and Bam. I do think guys realize how good Bam is. Like, I understand he's still not a household name compared to other uh, all-star players, but he's that good. And I, and I believe that guys understand that. And now, like I said earlier, they're going to get some more time with each other. And I'm sure that's only going to, you know, help things, right? As far as uh, from the Heat's perspective, I just... <sighs> They're in a weird spot because they can't wait around. Like they, they're not going to be able mm-hmm. to get in a situation where they uh, wait on this Dame Lillard, you know, like process to play out and, and that take any level of time into the free agency period. So it's going to be interesting to watch them manage that. I think Alex said it in a vacuum, you, you trade Bam for Dame, but man, you are punting your whole future. Uh, so so yeah. that's, it's, a, it's a really tough call. For a duo, too. Well, not only are you punting your whole future, but but you, you've mentioned the, the vacuum question. I don't know if it's you trade him in a va- – the way Adams put it, and I think we've talked about this, is I think you only consider making – If another guy's coming. If you've got another big coming in, right? So some of the guys that you and – Greg, you and I talked about yesterday, like if you think you can get Jaron Jackson Jr., he's not BAM – uh, but he's he's a quality young big to build with. If you think you can get John Collins, he's different from Bam, but he's a quality young big. Or to Kawhi build with. Leonard. I, I don't think you, somebody mentioned. Well, Miles okay, that's I had to mention him. Let's Moving save on. that for another podcast. Well, my Miles Turner, or I mean, I mean, there have been rumors that right that Indiana may keep Miles yeah, Turner and Rick Carlisle Sabonis, loves okay? Miles Turner. Maybe, Right. So I, I just think that, you know, if you can get in on an or maybe a devalued Porzingis somehow. Right. I mean, if you think you can rehabilitate him, I, you have to get in a, you, you can't go into this thing. I just don't think you're materially better. You're better than Portland. OK, because Jimmy's better than CJ McCollum. OK, so you're better than Portland and you're in the east. All right. So I, I do think it, it we've seen if you give the heat a couple of elite pieces, okay, whether it was Shaq or whether you bring in Jimmy, that they can transform it and they can shoot right up to the top four in the East, okay? that They've done that before. But I don't think, unless, I mean, you're not going to patch Drummond it with, and Deadman, you know, like that's not going to work. Drummond and Deadman, right? Like it, 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 that's not, that's not going to get you anywhere, right? No, definitely not. And look, I, I want to give a shout out to Chef Shirley here because this question, I think I, I've... I haven't been able to come up with an answer to it ever since you tweeted it out. It is why is why have been why have we been so quick to throw Bam into these kind of trade scenarios and knowing that you know Bam is probably the one that would have to go when the whole hardest stuff played out. That wasn't really something that we considered seriously throwing Bam it, it, into the deal. It's a good question, and, and I can answer it one way: is that I think that the perspective and the value of the assets that the Miami Heat have has yes. changed, and so back then yes. it felt like you could cobble together a package to go get a guy, and Bam didn't have to be included. And now you're you're blinking at that scenario, so you're having to think about if you're really committed to Jimmy's window, then everything has to be on the table for consideration, and also like. That James Harden, Dwayne Wade stuff, that that's Wade on Heat Twitter. So like they're they're always gonna bet against Harden to some degree. But isn't that is it also part of what I said though? That the I mean again, James Harden. Yeah. Dame Lillard is more of a quote unquote heat culture guy than James. Well, and he shows up in the playoffs and that's a Jimmy trait. And um, so like it's just a different approach to to the entire process. So regardless, like and I definitely understand what you're saying, but like what it ends up coming down to is 
it's similar scenarios. It's like they don't have enough of the the picks and pick swaps, which is really like what these front offices want when they're rebuilding and trading their franchise player and yeah. somebody who talked about staying there, you know, for for his entire career. They're looking to get as much as they can in return. And I thought that was the same kind of thinking when it came to Houston. Although we knew that the mm-hmm. the the Rockets owners were kind of trying to stay cheap and not take on long term commitments, we knew that they were trying to get back all those picks and pick swaps. And now they got to make hay and make stuff happen really quick because Dame is worth trading for. And like I said, in a vacuum and Bam is, is a guy who, you know, you trade him for Dame and you're upgrading, but it's like, Oh man, it's, it's more close to lateral. And that's why like all these players that they have, whether it's Goran, Iguodala, um, uh, the, uh, all of the unrestricted free agents, Oladipo. Um, mm-hmm. if you don't take advantage of any of these guys to, uh, like let's say they all walk this off season, Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, and, and you never got back any asset for any of those guys. That's an issue. And that's why you lack the ammunition in this circumstance. And the other thing, Greg is again, we're going to do a whole episode on this, but if, if it appeared that you hit on precious and KZ, and I'm not ruling out that either can develop with a summer league, neither of them has had a summer league, but if it appeared right now that you hit on either of them or both of them, this looks different. Part Let's of the hope reason, they have a good Olympics. Well, you, you hope so because right, exactly. Nigeria, because part part of this is Philly hit on Maxi, it appears. That makes him a more attractive asset. Philly hit on Tybal. That make that that makes that a more attractive asset. The Knicks, I don't know if the Knicks hit on Obi Toppin. Uh, you know, he looked better in the playoffs, didn't look like the regular season, but they hit they hit on quickly. Yeah. Okay. And so so that creates a better asset. All right. We're going to give our final thoughts here in a second. Before we do, I want to tell you about another great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, Therapist Preferred. This is a CBD company founded in 2019 by a physical therapist to maximize performance and recovery for active people. I got a little jar here. I'm going to go get myself some more. I got the strawberry lemonade gummies. Honestly, at this point, I can't sleep without them. 100% THC free. So you won't fail a drug test and third party lab verified. All the products made in the US with cutting edge technology from organically grown hemp. But again, you will not fail anything. Don't worry. Use a promo code five reasons. That's the number five reasons. Number five reasons for 25% off your order. That's the number five reasons. 25% off your order. We raise it from 20 plus free shipping on all orders. Get it before we change the deal. Therapistpreferred.com. Therapistpreferred.com. Use that code five. That's the number reasons. 30 seconds, actually 24 seconds. I'm going to give you guys a buzzer. Okay. You're getting a good big back. You know, you've got a big, good big lined up, but not a BAM level big. Okay. You've got to give up pretty much everything you have, all of your potential assets, the contracts, including BAM out of bio, but you're going to get Dame Lillard to pair with Jimmy a quality big of some kind, not a BAM level big. And then you're going to have to fill out the roster with minimums, exceptions, people who just want to play in Miami with them. 24 seconds. I'm counting you down. Greg, you do it. I do not do it. You can go straight to Alex and then we'll use a lot less time. Wow. No. So you threw me off there with that question, by the way, look, you can push me to do it to trade BAM for Dame. It's just going to take me forever to, to get me to push me into that scenario, right? I think when it comes down to it, I'll end up saying yes, but I'm going to lower that price, man. If you're making me throw BAM onto there, if I'm the Heat organization, I'm not giving you four picks and four pick swaps because you were already asking for that. BAM should help lower that price a little oh bit. I'm going to start yes. haggling. That, that's inherent in, the, in these discussions. I think that that needs to be implied and completely explicitly stated that like if yeah, the I'm Heat put angry. Bam in these talks, all these pick swaps and you're getting three and four first round picks, Portland can take that and shove it you know where. What if you know that if you don't do it, he's going to Philly or New York or Boston? Damn it. I mean, I guess you'd have to really know that the other – uh, path, whether it's Lowry and something, it's going to have to be a bold ass move. Like, let me just say, if Dame ends up in the East and you and your off season is Kyle Lowry and Andre Drummond, and you go come into a presser and say, we filled our holes as a big and a point guard, our two needs, we filled this off season. If you think that the fan base is going to take that in stride, it ain't happening. So like, that's, that's, a, it's a great question, Ethan. Like maybe you do feel that pressure. Just how petty are you as a Heat fan? I think this is the test now because of that question that you just threw out, Ethan. It's like, 
how badly are you willing to not only get Dame, but keep him away from the Knicks, the Sixers, and the Celtics? Just how petty are you? And I think that's why I can be swayed into doing it. But it, it would I probably like, could too. I would be heartbroken <laughs> to see Bam, you know, playing for another team. That's what it well, is for me. We're getting out of here because Greg's five-year-old daughter uh, is turning. Greg's daughter is turning five today, and she's going to be heartbroken if we don't finish the pod. So we're getting this thing up. Uh, Therapistpreferred.com. Use the code Five Reasons. Get you twenty-five percent off. Mybookie.ag. Use the code Five. Get yourself a bonus. And if you've got any kind of issue uh, legally, make sure you reach out to the Seltzer Mayberg Law Firm, especially personal injury. That's one O N E. Call legal.com. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.